is the only song I know. Hi, I'm Miriam, and this is Afghan Cooks with the Afghan who cooks. Today we're gonna make an eggplant dish called lagatak banjarn. Now, I tried to do some research into what the word lagatak means. Banjarn means eggplant. And I couldn't find any real etymology, probably because I also can't really read Pashto. Um, so it was kind of hard for me to find what I was looking for, but what I do know is that there is a form of Greco-Roman wrestling or some sort of wrestling or judo called lagata. In Pashto, lagata means kick and tuck is like tuck, 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 like from a gun. So I think that because this is a, um, like a pounded or a stirred, like it's a, it's like a kicked and a shot eggplant dish. Now, there are a few ways of making eggplant in Afghanistan. This is one of my favorite ways, and it wasn't until I was much older, I kind of moved out of my little, my little upstate New York suburban bubble that I learned that other cultures had a similar eggplant dish, and you might know it as baba ganoush. This is one that is a yogurt-based or sour cream-based baba ganoush as opposed to a tomato-based, but let's get started. So, obviously it's an eggplant dish, so you're gonna need eggplant. These are two eggplants. I normally use one so you can just half this recipe or you can double it. Um, but my family really likes this dish a lot, so I try to make it a lot. Look at how, look at this poor thing. See, this is from a company called Imperfect Foods. They don't sponsor us, but I mean, the eggplant is perfectly fine. It just doesn't look pretty. I, I call it misshapen foods, misidentified foods, but it's called Imperfect Foods. Check it out. You're also gonna need an onion and a head of garlic. Now you, you don't have to use this entire head, but because we're gonna be roasting all of these, I think it makes sense to roast an entire head or maybe even two so you have it around for future use. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your eggplant and you're just gonna cut it in half. And you're gonna put it on a baking sheet. Okay, there's my eggplant on my baking sheet. Look at how they're nicely lined up. And then you're gonna take your onion. I will keep saying this every single time, but there's not a single dish in all of Afghanistan. It doesn't matter what region you go to, where you go, whose house you go to, that's not gonna include onion. We have a dish called dupeza, which basically means to onion. Um, we put onion in this fatir, it's like a kind of like fluffy bread. We fry onions and just eat them in a soup, which is basically just yogurt and onion soup. That instrument I was playing at the beginning um, isn't actually from Afghanistan. I bought that locally here in a, an Egyptian store called Khan El Khalil here in Virginia. Um, it's a really fun store. It has all kinds of instruments. The Afghan ones, uh, maybe we'll try to find a video to show you. They contain, oh, at the beginning, um, at the beginning of the uh, video where I'm dancing, you can see the darya, the actual tambourines that we use traditionally in Afghanistan. So this, you just have to cut it in half. You don't have to do anything else to it, okay? Just cut it in half and put it on your baking sheet like that. And then just take your entire clove of garlic and put it on your baking sheet too. Now, before you start this, you have to preheat your oven to 500 degrees and most ovens take a little while so make sure that you do it before you start cutting anything, okay? Because you want your oven to be really hot, you want this to have kind of a charred, smoky flavor. And then what you wanna do is you wanna poke some holes in this, okay, in the skin even in the little one that is a little bit deformed looking. It's gonna taste delicious, just like the others, I promise. And then, you wanna take your olive oil sprayer. This is the tuck tuck part. Tuck, 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 tuck. And spray it with olive oil. You wanna spray the 
underneath of it too. And now we're gonna put it in the oven. This should only take about 20 minutes, but be aware that things may cook differently. So check it after about 20 minutes. Also, don't go too far from your kitchen. This is a big mistake that a lot of people make is that they are like, oh, I have 20 minutes, I'm gonna go, you know, take a shower, or fold laundry or do whatever. And then the next thing you know, everything is burned, okay? So just stay close, have a cup of tea. Watch more of my YouTube videos while you're waiting. While we're waiting for our eggplant and whatnot to cook, let's make some yogurt sauce. In the past decade or so, yogurt has been like the thing, like, oh, probiotics. Well, clearly yogurts have probiotics in them because they're, they're made with live cultures. You couldn't get all of these different kinds of yogurts. I mean, this is a long story about yogurt. Like who wants to hear about yogurt? But I'm gonna tell you about yogurt because yogurt is my culture. We grew up making yogurt at home. I don't remember ever buying yogurt in a grocery store. Like the Dan and stuff, you would get laughed out of Afghan high society if you had a container of yogurt. What is wrong with you? Are you lazy? Do you not want to get married? No, not really. Anyway, that's besides the point. Afghan yogurt is usually very thick, very creamy and sour. And because you can't get that sourness in most store-bought yogurts, even the Greek yogurt, we mix it with sour cream. If you're feeling healthy, just have plain non-fat yogurt. But if you're feeling like, you know, you want to get that richness in your food, Use sour cream, you can even use light sour cream. Here I have a quarter of a cup of yogurt and a quarter of a cup of sour cream mixed together. Did you realize what you did? What? You said yogurt is my culture. <laughs> See? So to this we're gonna add some mint. And don't be worried, the measurements are on the blog in the recipe. So you'll know what to do. Believe in yourself and some dill. Dill is used a lot in Afghan cooking. We add it to a lot of our soups and stews. This recipe doesn't have any of the other usual Afghan staples like coriander or cumin or turmeric because those things taste nasty if you add them raw. And this is a more fresh sort of dip, so. And then salt, okay? Add your salt, a couple of smurs of black pepper, and let's give this a stir. Mm, it's so pretty. It looks kind of like ranch dressing. It is, it's Afghan ranch dressing. If you go to Afghan restaurants, this is lemon juice. If you go to Afghan restaurants, you have um, white sauce, right? Uh, and it used to be that it was just, you know, this yogurt, sour cream, lemon juice mixture. Um, and normally you add some crushed garlic to this too. We're not gonna do that because we have a roasted garlic. But now they add mayonnaise to appeal to, you know, the people that like mayonnaise in America. But hey, anything to get you to try Afghan food, right? Here's a picture of me when I was just a wee thing. I came to America when I was 18 months old. Um, you know, everyone goes to Sears and they get their family photo done. I think the guys at Sears were probably pretty surprised when we showed up looking like this. But this is very traditional Afghan dress. When the war in Afghanistan started and we started being flung to far off lands, we took up other styles of dress. So. Sometimes people will see us in, you know, like the shalwar kameezes, but that's not really traditional to Afghanistan. Or we wear saris, again, not, not traditional to Afghanistan, but you know, it was done even back in the day. This is how Afghans dress. The men with the turban and the loose flowing clothes, and the women didn't wear a very tight hijab. Um, they just wore a loose scarf over their heads, and I guess kids dress like this so that they could look mad cute like I do right here. I checked this once at about nine minutes and parts of it were cooked, but then parts of it were still a little bit hard. And you don't want that, right? You, want, you don't want any tough parts of your eggplant. You want it all to be really soft. So I took it out and you can see this is what you want it to look like. See how the skin is really wrinkled? 
and this kind of pulls out your onion is charred in places and it's nice and soft and then you got your goods right here. Here's what I'm not gonna do right now, okay? I'm not gonna touch any of this because it's really hot. I'm here to protect you as we learn how to cook Afghan food. Now that this is cool, we can start putting this whole thing together. So I started scraping some of this out into the bowl, but I'm gonna show you how to do it. You just put your eggplant on a flat surface and then just, see, scoops right out. So easy. You can take out the seeds if you feel like it, but we don't care. And then we're gonna add the onion and just, um, I have here four, uh, I think five cloves of the garlic that we roasted. This was less than half of that whole head, so that's great, we have extra. And now we're gonna use something that they probably never used in Afghanistan back when I was growing up there, the zhuzhur, otherwise known as an immersion blender. Once that's thoroughly blended, we'll add our yogurt sauce. Just gonna put all of that right in there. One thing we need to understand is like a lot of cultures, we don't have recipes, right? We don't have a lot of cookbooks. Even now there are just a handful of Afghan cookbooks. And unfortunately, a lot of this has been lost because of war. So I learned how to cook primarily from my grandmother. Um, and of course my mom and my aunts are fantastic cooks. But you learn by watching or by helping when you're young. So there's never any real formal training. If you go to Afghan restaurants too, you'll see that most of those people are not, nobody went to chef school. And then we wanna stir this all together. And the reason why I tell you that about how we don't have recipes is that what I'm trying to show you is the style of how we cook and how we eat. And recipes are, are more of a template. I mean, there's definitely a time and a place for you to follow it thoroughly, maybe the first time you make something. But add more dill, add less, add more mint, add less, more lemon. I mean, it's really, this is just how it's made and then you can do whatever it is you want with it. Part of the reason why I wanted to start this channel was so that we would be able to document some of the food that I grew up with um, so that we wouldn't lose it to future generations. And whereas in the past people were more about, you know, the written word, now it's really all about video. So I'm hopeful that, you know, my kids or my nieces, my nephews will grow up, my grandchildren hopefully will will be able to look at this and say, oh that's that's my grandma and this is how she used to make things. And now we're gonna taste it again. Make sure the salt is correct. You're gonna hear me say this a lot, but dang that's good. <laughs> I didn't invent this recipe, I am gonna add just a little bit more salt. You know, there are women who came before me and made me who I am today. We're gonna stir that around again. And then we're gonna serve it and make it look pretty because if you serve this to your family or your guests, they're gonna wonder where they went wrong in raising you. Yeah, you wanna make a little valley in here, okay? Because we're gonna try to make this look really pretty, all right? And onto this, we're gonna add some fancy olive oil. You know it's fancy when it comes in a small container like this, not like the big Costco jug. And then sumac. Now, sumac comes from, I think, dried grapes. Check down below. We'll put exactly what it is. My producer will check me to make sure. But it has a um, sour taste. So I think it is sour grapes. Huh? Sour grapes. You won't have sour grapes if you eat this though. You'll be really happy. We eat it a lot with kebab and we use it as a, a topping for things as well. So we're gonna sprinkle some sumac. And if you watched my last video, you heard about our love of Parsley. Don't hate. Makes everything pretty. Time to eat. 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 Some 
PETA, I didn't make this. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up so YouTube knows you like it. Hit the bell notification so that we'll come up in your homepage whenever we release a new video. And subscribe. Thanks. See you next time.